Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Keeson. With me on the show today, Debbie G and Neo Positivity. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Indeed we are, and we are actually, we're, we're in recovery mode here on LOA Today. I didn't tell you guys this before the show, but yesterday we had the funniest show we've had in years. Oh, yeah. We had a guest on. Uh, a guy named um, um, Corey Hilton. Corey Hilton. <laughs> well, you know who he is because you had him on your show, Debbie. I had him on yesterday yeah. morning, and we were having yeah. a freaking blast. It was crazy. And then we also had Alex Standy on. Of course, Alex is a former stand-up comedian, and the two of them just ratcheted it up within like five minutes. And from that point on, throughout the entire show, the way I, I, the way I described it to Corey after I emailed him the link afterward, I said, "My smile hurts." Nice. Nice. <laughs> ah, Lord. That's what it was like. Yes. I mean, and, and he loved it too. All of us were just absolutely flipping out about how much fun we had. It was, it was literally more fun than human beings should be allowed to have, but it was great. So yeah, if you didn't catch that episode, check it out. We're still kind of recovering from it, but I think we're going to, uh, this is going to be a nice recovery show because I always have a good fun with you guys and, and we're going to have a guest coming on in about 15 minutes or so. She's uh, finishing up another gig. Um, and, and that's going to be an interesting one. She's a TV actress. So we're going to get to tie into the world of uh, acting and theater and TV, which Debbie loves so much. You, you were telling us before the show, and I know you've kind of touched on this privately with me, but you, you got a background in this field, right? Well, not in the field. I was, I was all involved with it in school. And then all up until I was like 16 or 17, whenever I broke my back, that's when I stopped. If I hadn't broken my back, I probably would not have stopped because it's so much fun to pretend musicals to me were like the best, though, because, you you know, mm. like the dance is so challenging to get these routines down and try to stick with everybody. I think that's where people got that whole line dancing thing and freaking. Oh, know. probably. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. It's like, are you guys I think they're just trying, you know, I don't know. I've never understood line dancing. I understand it when you're up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I have never understood the line dancing part. Not, a, not to offend anybody if you're into well, that. Well, it's the consumer version of it. That's what it is, right? You have the pro version and you have the consumer version. Well, I guess that's a good way to get ready for a musical. <laughs> yes, like sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> now, all you gentlemen are out there going... Wait a minute. She's telling me my line dancing is like being in a musical. Yes, darling. Get those leads yeah. hard out, baby. Yes, if you were questioning that, I second that motion. <laughs> I'm <doubling> down on <laughs> that. And I'm asking why you never asked yourself that before. Uh, hey, Jeffrey's got a question for you. He says, do you ever feel like you want to go back to the theater? Oh, God, I actually do. I, I love being on stage. I'm a Hamlet. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but here's the I thing. I am such a Hamlet, and I love it, yes. There's a difference between being on stage and being in theater. Now, I love True. being on stage, but I don't like the responsibility of remembering three hours' worth of lines or even an hour's worth of lines and then getting them wrong or something like that. And then I'm not 100% being authentic and true. That's why I love live streaming um, so much. So, yeah, I, 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 that scares me. That whole remembering lines and stuff, that scared me. I love that. So, and I love, I agree with you. My favorite theater is improv. Mm. My I was going to ask, totally. have you ever done an improv musical? I've never done Best an improv thing musical. ever, you could break out and dance or song whenever you oh want my God, on that stage. Would be so much fun. <laughs> when do you get a chance to do that on stage and no one judges you? That sounds no, like right? a Saturday I mean, Night Live routine right there. Right I am there. all about it right now. I'm all about it right now. Are you kidding? I mean, geez, Louise. I got my tight pants on. I got my tight pants on. <laughs> I got my tight pants on. I so, mean, so you could Jeffrey's just... asking you, so what's stopping you? Hmm. I mean, you said you like it. I love so that. I do. I do. I love that. I love it, Jeffrey. I I love being of service. If I I think that it'd be a really seriously hilarious thing to teach emotional intel intelligence with improv. Ooh, wow! You'd I mean, y'all know. Right <laughs> well, you know, my com communications like my favorite thing in the world. I I can't stop studying it, and I swear to you, if we. I don't know about you all, but I baff, I blow communication all the time. But they've had stuff like that. They've had, what was that thing they did a long time ago where somebody was like, 
making a joke and then they, then somebody would take it from there. I forget what it was called. But we have our guest here, so I'm going to stop with all that. And thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, Hi, we love you, you, Jeffrey. Hello, Katie. Thank Hi. you for joining us. I, thank I, you so we, much for having me. I'm so grateful. Thank you for understanding, too. Well, we didn't get to do our pre-show conversation, so I have to ask this live. How do I pronounce your last name? Chinakis. It is Chinakis. Okay. That was yeah. going to be my first guess, but I didn't dare say it. Okay. Oh, I should have just had you guess first. Darn it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was doing. Hey, I do, that's what I do half the time anyway. Even after I got the name, I said, what, what was it? I forget what it was. I'll just go with this one. That's the way it often goes. You know, you just do what you have to do. Nice but, to uh, meet everyone. Walt, Neo, Debbie, right? That's Absolutely. right. Nice I to meet you, it. too. Hi, yeah. Kate. We're excited to have you here. We were talking about theater. We were just talking about, like, improv and emotional intelligence. And wouldn't it be fun to just, like, bring bring uh, emotional intelligence and improv together? Because – and Jeffrey here says improv teaches us how to listen. I, uh, totally. Absolutely agree. But I'm going to – I am just so excited. But, Walt, I'm going to give it back to you. Okay. So I'm going to give it to Katie so she can tell us a little bit about who Katie is. Because you got quite a resume there, girl. Yeah. I mean, what do you want to know? Just kidding. Uh, I come from a big Greek family, um, so uh, I was raised in Michigan, and um, I always um, aspire to be great and to be legendary and to do great things in the world. And so um, I've lived up to my intentions and my words uh, every single day of my life through thick and thin. I show up to the mat no matter how it looks. Like right now, I'm, I'm on my last day of meds. I'm on a Z-pack because I have a cold right now. So, oh, but, sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. But I'm still, I'm grateful that I've set myself up in a way I can be in the privacy of my own home and uh, utilize my, my gifts and my talents through, you know, my instrument of my voice and, you know, my mind and how I've you know, set my life up to be here today. So I'm so grateful. Um, I come from a big Greek family. Um, and I grew up with Greek mythology and Socrates and Plato. So a lot of language mm. and literature and which really spoke to my soul and my being. And so, um, also I grew up, you know, 30 minutes outside of Detroit. So my parents were living in Detroit, you know, and it was safe and they were living there. And then the riots happened. So as a kid, I always like found out about like the riots and like I didn't understand it. It was like such like I didn't it didn't make sense to me because, um, you know, I didn't know what was happening until I saw the film Detroit by Catherine Bigelow who uh. at the Directors Guild. And then I had this rage inside me and I was just like, oh, like now I know what my parents are talking about what they went through because I saw like, you know, these young girls partying in Detroit, having a good time in Detroit with, you know, the people and like when, when that happened with the riots, I was able to viscerally see what happened. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up on Motown. Um, I grew up, you know, going 45 minutes each way, listening to Casey Kasem. So that was. <laughs> Casey that was, Kasem. Wow. I haven't yeah. heard that name in ages. Yeah. 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 I mean, when I go home to visit, we still listen to Casey Kasem, like, you know, and so that feel good music of Motown and language and harmonies and melodies, it's, it's what I grew up on. And, and then, um, you know, so that's that's some of my my background, but yeah. yeah. And you've yeah. had some pretty cool uh, gigs that you've done. You've been uh, let's see, was it CSI New York? You've been on uh, uh, Law and Order SVU. I mean, you've been on a lot of these really great network shows. That must have been kind of fun to do those. So fun, so so fun. Uh, Gary Sinise gave me a huge compliment, which is really on top of mind as of like just this past year because. Like when you do something in life, you're just kind of like doing it, going to the next thing, doing it, going to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like reap what you sow, you know, and enjoy the fruits of your labor. And so it's right. like by doing these podcasts, I'm just like, oh, wow, because it's a time for me to reflect and look like, oh, that was a moment in time where I was with Gary Sinise honoring and respecting and loving him so much from Forrest Gump and just who he is as an actor. And um, and then him looking at me in my eyes and just saying, you're a very soulful actor. And I'm Ooh, just like, that's you know, nice. It, it was such a gem to receive, you know, so early on in my career. And then, because there's different methods of acting, you know, and so, like, to, and I'm a poet, so, like, it, it totally makes sense that I, as a human, express myself through creativity of language and the word and the vibration and the sound, and, and I can apply that to my craft. So it's, it, I didn't know it, it was going to happen, but it did, so... I'm very happy about it. 
And, and you've had the opportunity to work with some name actors, uh, some of them on, on your resume. Al Pacino's been on there. You know, you've worked with Morgan Freeman, Antonio Banderas, Nicolas Cage, Robert De Niro. I mean, it, when you think of Jessica Simpson, when, when you think of all the, the people that you've been in a film with or on stage in some way with, what what's the one that jumps out to you? What's the one that says, yeah, that was the one that really got my attention? Oh, I mean, that's, that's a, that's an interesting question. I mean, but for just from being in the moment right now, um, you know, one time, um, I was, you know, in South Africa with, um, 50 Cent in G Unit. And oh. like, I was just got off performing in front of 18,000 people and who kid, DJ who kid, we're in the dressing room. Like there's a video clip online. He's like, yo, how do you do that, man? Like, how do you, how do you do that? And I'm, and I'm in the moment. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't think about it. I just, I just go and do it. Like something takes over and I just like went for it. You know, I like, I don't really think about it. If I think about it, I'm probably not going to do it. (laughs) Like we get over analytical in our head and our throat chakra where we talk ourselves out of it or like we're in two in our head. We don't actually show up. But if you're just like, yep, I'm going to do it. I'm just, I'm going to listen to that intuitive hip. I'm going to go for it. Then I'm able to, you know, um, just, just do it. I guess I just always been that way which is a double-edged sword because some people don't like it, but who cares what other people like? It's all about like your purpose of why you're here on the planet. Um, and if they're judging you and not understanding you, they're judging themselves and they don't have enough compassion for themselves to have compassion for you. That says a lot about their character more so than about your character. So as long as we're authentic to who we are along our journey, um, I think this land is a, a playful one and we're supposed to play while we're here. And there's journeys along the way, definitely lessons to learn, you know, um, and I guess, but I just held that so strong with me, like that inner child thing where maybe I held it too tight too, where it maybe kept me from certain experiences, but I rather have more joyous rainbow positive experiences than, um, you know, those other ones that are, are more difficult, but I, you know, I've had some of those too, but well, um, that's life. That's part of what happens yeah. in life, right? Yeah. You, know, yeah. Yeah. you, you breathe and stuff happens. It's simple. I, um, I actually... I had to allow myself to do that because I wasn't booking certain roles as an actor. I had to take Mm -hmm. time out as an actor because I was getting these opportunities and I was up for it. Like between like me and like Tom Hanks's son's girlfriend at the time, or who knows Mm -hmm. if they got married or not, but I'd be like up for these amazing roles. Um, she looks too young, although I was the appropriate age or, you know, like (laughs) she looks too old or, or no, it's always too young, never too old, but, but, um, well, that, that's not too bad. I mean, it's nice to look young. Right. It's a good yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, the thing is, I had to actually take time off of on-screen acting so I could know thyself and get dirty in life and have more grittier experiences so I would be more authentic through the screen with more vulnerability, compassion, and understanding. I needed some of that. So I went on a journey. I, I told myself and I allowed myself to go on a journey in 2014 to explore those kind of things. Well, while we were waiting for you to oh, – I'm sorry. Go ahead, Neil. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask real quick. Um, is any parts of that journey that you went on that you still grind and implement in your daily life? Cause I've been on similar journeys and certain things I did during that time frame, I make sure I do daily now just to check that part of me, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be doubt or hate or anything like that. Anything you, you know, anything that you carry to day to day? Um, in regards to. That journey you took that you needed to get away and, and really analyze things. Um, I mean, that journey um, is led me into like the journey I'm on now. But um, I guess. What would that thing be? Um, I try I try to give you an, an example. Like for me, I'm currently on one of those similar journeys. Yeah. Um and one thing that I had learned recently was to, um, well, first of all, instead of seeing things as manifesting, seeing them as creating, you know, manifesting devol- involves other people. They got to do this and I got to do this. And it hasn't been completed yet. You're kind of putting blockades in front of yourself as opposed to creating something. You, when you say that, it's like, it's here already. I can create it. You know, it kind of takes out those, that middleman and allowing it to, allowing it to happen now. Not after the phone call and then it gets shipped or this happens, but allowing it to happen now. There's something about allowing it that I learned in my journey that I know is going to stick with me every day for the rest of my life. I'm going to make sure I remember that every day. 
that I yeah. just picked it up in this journey and it's so critical for me. So I was looking for anything like that that you picked up in that journey that you make sure you implement every day to keep yourself on point mentally. Well, what I did before this journey happened that I'm specifically thinking about in the journey and through that journey, um, I pray every day. So I always kept my prayers. I pray before every meal. I pray, you know, when I wake up, I pray when I go to bed, you know, even if it's for like a couple minutes, like I always pray. So no matter what, who I am and what I've been through, I always pray to God. Okay. So I've yeah, always but- had that connectivity. And although I allowed myself to go on this journey to lose myself, to be able to go on a journey to find myself again, I never, ever lost God, never let go of my prayer and, and, and that right. part of me. So no one's ever asked me that. That's I was like thinking about it for a long time. The course is, is amazing. And everyone totally. should make sure they have that in every day of their life. Have a one-on-one conversation, not... God bless Aunt Joan and Uncle Jerry are just talking <laughs> to the walls. Don't talk to the walls. Get involved in a one-on-one conversation. Like if someone walked by the background, you wouldn't even notice like a real one-on-one conversation. Have those conversations with God more often than not. Trust me, it needs to be every day. Debbie, I saw you oh. jumping up and down. Oh, I was or, 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 or one, one, or one, sorry, one second. Or whatever that is for some person. Like it, whatever. Yeah, whatever God it is, is for you. Like whatever, I just say whatever, God. Whoever they talk encompass- to, you know, it's like. Yeah, whoever it is you believe in. Whatever you can connect to that, that anchor source in the world that connects that, cause we all have that connectivity. Yeah. So that's important. Yep. Well, I just wanted to point out, I mean, from the beginning, from the moment that you started, you said you're setting your intentions. You straight up know that's what you're doing. And that's what I was catching. I also heard you say that you said the sacred yes, but before you could say the sacred yes to yourself, you went on a journey. Losing ourself to me meant you were saying, I let go of the ego part of me to rediscover who the who the true essence of my my divine being is. And I freaking love that. And now you have take you have taken and you have swirled it together. To become this, and I'm going to use Jeffrey's words because I thought it was so rad, sacred performer. Yeah, that was a great phrase. I love that. Seriously, a sacred yeah. performer. Dude, right? I mean, how freaking rad is that? That's so good. Sacred so, performer. Oh, I love that. I what, is that like, what comes up with that? Just, I, just, let, just rip with what, it. What comes up for me is I want to record a song and, and give it a shout out. You know what I mean? But sacred performer, it's, it's 1000%, like staying intentional of who I am, no matter like if I'm flocking with the herd or not, and mostly not, um, because I'm in, um, that sacrament to self. Um, my birthday is 11 11. So I'm like, I'm all about like intention and the lucky stars and like make a wish. Like it's, I am the wish. Like I look at all the stars <laughs> in your background. Like I am the wish. It's me. I'm the wish. I choose me. And I That's just right. kind of always had that divine knowing from when mm-hmm. I was young. My Yaya, who's my best friend who I'm named after, I was born with two first names, uh, mm-hmm. Katie Chinakis and Kiriaki, who's a saint. You know, we're named after saints and goddesses in the Greek tradition, you know, like heritage from, you know, my dad's side of the family. I'm named after his mother, Maya, who's my best friend, who's 92. And, you know, she gave me doses of this unconditional love, right? And Homa. So when I went to Greece one time, I'm like, yeah, like, what can I bring you back? She says, Homa, Homa. What's Homa? The homeland, the dirt. She wanted the dirt. Like, I, I couldn't buy her anything materialistic, like, like, what else could I buy her? Like, you know what I mean? What could it, what she wanted the dirt. I, I took like bottles and I brought back the land for her. And she taught me the importance of never forgetting where you come from, your roots and respecting the family and, and the land, you know? So for me, that's what like a sacred being or a sacred artist is. And remembering that because when you're an artist, when you're vocalizing or producing a beat or writing poetry or, you know, putting a craft into being an actor or a voiceover actor and, and you're painting, you, you go to the baseline of the roots of however I'm intentionally feeling in that moment, eradicating however I'm feeling, whatever emotion it could be, right? And, and being truthful to that base of a root of who I am in this moment. That's very sacred to me. I freaking dig it. You're and, and every time you're going back to the authenticity of your truth, the vulnerability and the appreciate I have a deep appreciation for that. Because that is really where it's at, you know? I in in this life, we get to go through these journeys to rediscover 
that spark and I'm digging it. Totally rad. Spark um, that G vibe. Spark that G vibe. <laughs> totally. Whoa, that gratitude, gratitude vibe. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I like that. Jeffrey, Jeffrey wants to know, do you feel like you're telling your story through acting or are you telling somebody else's? That's a great question. It's well a good done. question. Yeah. It's a I just, great question. <laughs> what? 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 I was doing, well, oops, I did that. I take okay. over sometimes and I just do that. It's okay. That's part of what we do around here. We got three hosts. I don't know if you know, know this, Katie. We have three hosts of three podcasts talking to you right now. Right now, you're on officially on my podcast, but Neil has one. Debbie has I'm one. Not. I have one. You know, I mean, this is like podcast heaven going on here. You all are geniuses. Oh my <laughs> God. Yo, that is so smart. It's some wow. stuff, girl. Tell you what. It's really that easy is, peasy and lemon squeezy. And it's a dream team right here. This, is, this isn't just a couple people thrown together. This really is a dream team. It, where is everyone right now? I'm in New York right now. I go to LA on Tuesday. I'm near. I, I'm in Connecticut. Huntington Beach, California. I'm in LA. Florida. Yeah. You're in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Where? So we're coming the whole country. Right near Tampa. And where? Where you're in California? Where? Huntington Beach. Oh, cool. I'm going to San Diego on Tuesday. Oh, freaking sweet. Where are you going? I for? love Huntington Beach. Seriously, there is no. It's. There's, I have so much love for Huntington Beach. It is yeah. the most extraordinary town, right? But yeah. San Diego, San Diego is completely awesome. You know, the self-realization center is there. Yogananda's. Is. Oh, is. isn't it? Have you been to the one in LA too? Yeah, I've been to a couple oh. of them in LA. Oh my, are they not the coolest things you've ever seen? Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. lived here forever. The self-realization, realization centers, Yogananda, um, wrote a book called The Biography of the Yogi. Yeah. Yeah, autobog, auto, be, uh, never mind, I'm not speaking to And I saw his documentary as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, I just, you're just darling, I love you. See, oh, I here's, love you too, thank see, you. See, straight up, I mean, this is this generation that I love so much, right here, right now. Talk about the 100th monkey, social change 2.0, watch the tipping effect happen as we speak. Watch it, everybody. Exactly. Straight up, right? Exactly, I'm, I totally. just got chills. The stuff I've been saying my whole entire life, I have so many chills right now. The stuff I've been saying my whole entire life, it's what people are actually doing now in humanity. That's right. Especially That's in right. Web3 with NFTs. Everyone, they're not gatekeepers. Everyone's there to support one another. They're, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Whatever your weakest link is, not, let's not shame or blame you. Let We'll find someone to help you do that. That's so, right. That's, that's right. how I've always been. So a little background, then we'll get to this acting question. Um, I grew up running cross country. So what you do as an individual affects the whole. And it's a it's a communal team sport. It's an individual wow. sport, but it's a team sport. And so I've always applied that psychology to life, to my workplace, to my friendships, to everyone. I've tried to, I always help people. I always, like, you know, people have surpassed me. There are people who, I won't name names, who have been in big franchise movies and well, they've tanked their career because of getting into drugs, but that's out of my control. I was taking, I took them to their first red carpet event. I was taking them to like really cool events. I took people, I got them like campaigns. I've gotten people amazing opportunities because I always, and my mom's like, Oh, you know, you know, watch out for Katie, watch out for Katie. Uh, uh-uh, uh, it's all good. If I, by me, me, I am watching out for Katie by me seeing someone's light and introducing them because they could be a right fit and I'm not. That's. That's energy. Energy is energy and motion. That's, those are like, those are like, um, energy deposits I'm putting out into the universe. You know what I mean? Yep. And pay it forward and it all comes full circle, right? So when I get hit, I'll be like, yo, I'm getting hit with some positivity or I'm, I'm getting hit with this. I'm getting hit with that. It's what we, what we put out there is what we're going to, you know, get back as our gift. So it, it, I like the full circle of positivity mentality. Um, but to answer your question, what was the question again? Um, Do you when feel I'm... like you're telling your story through acting or are you telling someone else? Oh, wait, 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 before she answers that, though, I got to say this really oh, yeah. quickly. Sure. Dude, like it is called showing up and being that that you desire. It's called showing up first and being a service and not having any attachment to the outcomes. No agenda, straight up, real, authentic with no bullshit. I love this. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. We'll get, we're going to go to the acting question, I swear. But oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. So, okay. And then, I, I mean, since we're on this and elaborating a little more, not only are we doing that, but we need to check in with self to make sure because a lot of people in the world, when we're saying this, and a lot of people in the quote unquote spiritual world, they'll then 
think they have to leave themselves out or they'll put other people first where they're serving others, but they forget to serve themselves. So then they're feeling they're outpouring and they're taking care of everyone, but then they have resentment because they're so depleted, but they're feeling, they're forgetting to fulfill their own cup. So what I tell my coaching clients, I do industry coaching is the 80, 20 rule. Like right now you're seeing my energy and you're like, Oh my God, amazing. And I'm seeing yours. And like, like for me, this is your hundred. And for, for you, like this is your hundred. But when I get to my 80, right after my day, if I'm doing things, when I get to, when I get to my 80, I check in with myself. I tell my clients, yeah. like, check in with yourself when you get to 80, when you get to 80, check in with yourself. Do I have more in the tank to keep going? Or do I need to say, okay, I got to go. Thanks. Got to wrap it up. Goodbye. And so you keep that 20% to take a bath to sleep, to talk to your family member, whatever you want to do, sit around farting around, whatever, but just keep that 20% for self, for the unknown. So we can get to a homeostasis and, you know, connect our equilibrium and just get to a calmity point of, you know, our base. So we can get to our base. So we're fulfilling our own cup. So we're not getting the burnt out running on fumes. Right. And then people have resentment and they're shaming and blaming other people because, I'm doing this, I'm serving, I'm helping, I'm doing everything for everyone else. Yeah, but don't throw you out of the equation. Let's make sure we're taking care of ourselves too, which is super important. We can only take care of ourselves first fully before we can actually take care of other people. That's right. Straight up. Yeah. By the yeah. way, I, I just have a new word we, a new word there. I didn't know, I'd never heard the word before. Calmidity. I love that. Calmidity. That's, right. that's fabulous. Calmidity. Yeah. I love that. Um, have you heard compersion? Now I have. Now you have. I love you. Oh, you're going to love this. It is joy and celebration of others' accomplishments and achievements in life. It's celebrating somebody on the next level. So I have deep compersion for you. Thank you. I'll receive that. Mm. Yes. Boy, are we going to have some fun. I just, oh, oh, well, because I have a show called Women Rising and we're going to, we're going to really, yeah, it's dynamite. But not to get too, I don't want to get off of this because you've really given people some very, very deep tools right now for self-care, for self-nourishing. Self-first is not selfish. And if you're just joining us, you're going to need to go back and hear what Katie has just gifted all of us. That is beautiful channeling. You rock. Oh, thank you, Debbie. I appreciate sure. you. Thank you. Uh, it was thank beautiful. You. I was like, whoa, boom, right there. Seriously. In your face. <laughs> oh, uh -uh. <laughs> Let's just show up and make it happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Good like, way to do it. Cut to the good stuff so that other stuff is just by the wayside. It just doesn't exist. It's already filtered. Gone. That's right. Get yeah. It is. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, there was a two-part question. So let's yeah, take it one a, at a time. What, two, uh, part, two parts on the acting question. So the first part is, do you feel like you're telling your story through acting or are you telling someone else's? Okay. Do I, do I feel like I'm telling my story through acting? Mm -hmm. um, 1,000%. I always like to bring a, a slice of me and my life experience um, to the craft, to the character. Um, and then... I'm able to channel. I'm really good at channeling, like Debbie mentioned. So I'm able to channel Very good. Um, sensorially what I've seen from others or uh, leaving it to my imagination and applying it to the character. So, yes, both. I do so both. Both. Both at the same time. Yep. I, I want to expand on this. I want to talk about archetypes mm. and, and, and bringing and in, in performing and in acting. How, how that you, do you, how do you integrate the archetypes and actually be that for that minute? Because that's brilliant to be able to do that and yeah. then shift it into your own life. What kind of archetypes, um, have you really tuned into to integrate into your being here and letting it come out through your acting? Yeah, it's a good question. So when it comes to archetypes, um, I love Caroline Mice, M Y S S, the Mystic Intuitive. She's amazing, She's badass. And love so, it. but so when it comes to the language of the archetypes, and I've gotten you know the cards, and I've looked at all mine, and I've done those things. It's it's been a while, so I I should probably have a deck of cards with me. But um, yeah, I I guess I I wouldn't know the um the names to give them to uh, apply him to the craft. Um, so I, I can't really um, speak on that to give you the exact names because I don't recall what they all are right okay. now. Um, 
Yeah, but um, I know also the Enneagram. Do you know the Enneagram? I, I don't know a lot about it. I've touched on it. Tell me more. So, yeah, so you can go to Enneagraminstitute.org. And you, yes. it's $12. You just click the USA button and it's like 128 questions. So like after you take a hot shower and you have moments with yourself, light a candle and you answer the 128 questions. It's not based on how I want someone to perceive me or the way I want to, the, the way I want to be. It's based off my habitual patterns now. And it changes every X amount of years because when if I took the test when I was 14, it would not align to my intentions of who and how I am now. So it's good to take do it every few years. Um, Enneagram is a Greek root of word, Enea. It means nine. So there's nine different types. We're all of the types as human beings, but based on our habitual patterns, we're more dominant with one of the numbers. So once you find out the number you are, right, then uh, then you see there's three different sections, okay? And my section is, heart the heart category and then when you know your number you have something called wings and it's the left and right of what you are so my i'm a two so my wings is a um is a um is a one and a three right okay those are those are my wings um and then you have basically uh judith who is on the board of the enneagram institute she did this workshop for two days and she spent one year and she took the Enneagram and and then apply them to characters and films and TV shows. So when you watch a TV show, there's arcs of a guest star character and either the characters are either evolving or they're devolving in life. You're either like steady, steady pace, or you're either evolving or devolving. So if I'm a two, I could be an evolved two where I could give an example, or I could be a devolved two, or like the Joker, right? So he's like a devolved seven, right? And if you look at, I'll give you an example from um, Renee Zellweger and uh, and Jerry Maguire. So mm -hmm. in the beginning of the film, Tom Hanks, he's married to the Priscilla woman. They're married and they're both threes. And there's this big party going on and everything has to look amazing. Right. He's married to isn't Elvis Presley's daughter in the, in the film. I, I don't remember her name, but um, the actor. So they're married and they're both threes. And like he just got fired or quits his sports agent job. And she's like, oh, my God, where's my dad? The politicians where's the work where's everyone going to think. And he's like, I just lost my job. You don't care about me. She's all about the image. Both of them are about the image. So they break up. Then he meets then then Renee Zellweger goes with him to start his own company. And she's the nine. She's the peacemaker. She's an evolved nine. She's a peacemaker. And she goes with him. And through the journey of the movie, he becomes this three who's more about materialistic things and work and stuff. And he evolves to relationship, family, you know, children. He evolves to that. But throughout the film, Cuba Gooding Jr., his client, although he's a star and he is who he is, you know, with all this power, you know, He's all about family. He's a two. He's like an evolved two about like, yo, my family's number one, no matter what. And so they learn from one another. They grow and learn. And, and through Cuba and through Renee Zellweger, um, Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise, he becomes an evolved three. So that's like the Enneagram of knowing where you are and what kind of people you're dealing with, right? Of who they are and what level, if they're more of evolved being like you, like with the communication you're saying and the things you're sharing with me and, and reading neo positivity, these are like evolved languages, words, things that are being said where we connect in depth on a different unique level instead of walking past and seeing people who are just like me, me, me thinking there's a shortage of supply of abundance and there's not enough for everyone based on generational trauma and circumstances and environments of what we're exposed to. So um, you know, it's people like us who can share with humanity so we can evolve together. So it's kind of like, you know, full circle around here. But yeah. Oh, wow, we just got a seminar. I mean, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so that damn was good. I, I, I am just, I, I am excited. I am really excited to share this episode today with, with people because everything that you're saying is on point. You're delightful. Oh, <laughs> takes one just, to one. 
Let, let me ask you a question. That, that's kind of, I, <laughs> sure, I was going to ask it in another way before, but I want to ask it in a broader sense now. Sure. Before I was going to ask what what really made you love acting, but I, I got to broaden it beyond that. Sure. What made you love what you do in life? Because you mm-hmm. love it. It's, I mean, the love just comes through so clearly. Why do you love it so much? Well, I think it was given to me. I think it was given to me, and I think it's given to all of us. And I just, I didn't ignore it. I feel like at a young age, a lot of people ignored that gift and that voice and that intuitive hit. And I saw when I was a kid, um, the people's fire out. And I, I didn't know the language of empath. I didn't know the language of HSP, highly sensitive person, 16 to 20% of the population are HSPs. Like I didn't know those things, but I was very in tune with the intelligence of my body, emotional intelligence. And I felt an empath and I felt other people's pain. So I wanted to make other people feel happy, that happiness that I felt inside. I wanted, I, and I knew I had to protect my flame because I saw all the people with their flames out and I saw and heard what could happen about, you know, your flame being out and then being mundane and going through this miserable life. And I said, I never wanted to be that. So I was, I protected that sacred energy of mine at a very young age, no matter what. And trust me, life has tried to rip it from me so many times. And at, at, at some, at some point along the way, I'm very like alpha, but along the way, I'm like, okay, if it's supposed to be that, I was submissive. I'm like, all right, go ahead, take it from me. And I allowed it to happen, but I, I intentionally allowed it to happen. Cause I'm like, maybe I'm supposed to be some holding on so tight. I'm like, maybe it's supposed to happen. And I allowed it to happen and I allowed it to happen. And I knew I was allowing it to happen, but I knew that I did that. I knew I had trust and faith that I would find myself again and going through the journey. I didn't know it was going to be as long and it was scary. And I, I understood fear. And so I, it made me more compassionate understanding of those things. And I had the depths of my soul to go through those journeys. Um, I never want to let it go again. I never want, I never want to go through that experience again, but I don't have to. I did it and I, I chose to go on that journey because it was supposed to be for me. Everyone's journey is different, but it was a part of mine. Um, and I went to certain depths and felt certain sorrows. Um, but as a poet, as an artist, you know, I went to certain places. Um, and not to hurt myself, you know, but just to explore those things. And I did. And I had, like I said, I had a divine knowing that I was going to be able to, you know, get to myself again. Um, and I have, and now that I have, I'm more connected than ever because I'm the one that knows what it's like to have it and then not have it, but I'm all, and then have it again. But I'm aware that some people don't remember ever having it. And that's where I can help people because they did know but their their fire got out really young and then society and circumstances brainwashed and took over and played them so small to play so to be so stupid and to really be so stuff. to play so, so victim, small so victim so in that so yeah. encased in that yeah right so without your dark you wouldn't know your spark Whoa! Oh, that, that's a Debbie. That's, oh, yeah. that, that's yeah. a Debbie G. Yeah, that, yeah. that's yeah. a G. I, well. you can count on gratitude. A <laughs> gratitude. I'm all about it. I'm all about appreciation. And one of the things that I'm loving as you talk is I can hear the essence of the deep, grateful beingness that you have for these experiences. These adventures that you went on, these journeys, it was an adventure. I get where you've been. I've been there, done that, love that, right? And I did exactly that. Walt and Neo know that, that mm-hmm. whole, all right, it's an adventure, isn't it? Yeah. Stepping I want to speak in, on, stepping I, into the you, unknown, I, man. Some of those lyrics, what you just said, I put it into a poem. Just what you said. I've been yeah. there, done that. Bermuda, this one poem when I was in Bermuda, I've been there, done that, seen such, or it was a Dominican Republic. I think it was Dominican Republic. This uh, poem that I wrote. Those lines exactly. Been there, done that. Experience. Don't have to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I want, I want to speak on on some. You said something about being an alpha earlier. Yeah. And I know a lot of people can relate to this. As an alpha, especially me, I used to be a cop. And really. So, yeah. So basically, right out of high school, I became the most powerful person in every room I walk into. Wow. You know, it doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States, I can lock your ass up. 
Um, so, and even if my sergeant or lieutenant or chief of police is standing there, he can't order me not to lock a person up. I could still do it. I'm gonna get in trouble afterwards. So having this power <laughs> and no. when you, when it comes to allowing life to happen, you, you kind of feel out of place because you're like, I'm used to having so much control over everything. I feel weird letting go. And the only way I was able to get through this, because, you know, I was captain of the karate team, captain of the football team. And I'm always, I've always been in control my whole life. And the only way I was able to actually allow myself to let go was to understand that uh, allowing is giving permission. That's a boss move. Mm-hmm. I allow this person to do I allow my son to do that. I allow, that's a boss move. Mm-hmm. So in allowing, you're still being that alpha. You're still being that boss. Yeah. And then you have to accept the uncomfortability or getting out of your comfort zone of just letting the universe play. Because this is going to play anyway. And you don't really have control anyway outside of the en- energy you're giving off. You just think you have control over what your kids are doing in the other room right now. And you don't. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, for the alphas, you know, think about it that way. Another thing I want to say real quick, it was I don't know who caught it. But there was a moment in time where Katie was talking and her eyes were closed for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I looked over and Debbie's eyes was closed for a long time, too. Yeah. And it was crazy because at the same exact moment, both of their eyes opened. I don't know who caught that. Go back. Like, if you guys watch this, go back to 35 minutes, 35 (laughs) minutes and like 40 seconds. And they both had their eyes closed for a while. And all of a sudden they both. At the same time, I was like, what is going on? It was on? true. Yeah. It was total connection. Total connection. Yeah. I think it's probably the, the channeling too, because to go to that place, so if able to close and just go to that silence place of, you know, that initial root of that initial hit and root of when I experienced that, because we went back to, you know, a certain time. So I wanted to really authentically go there. So by closing the eyes, you know, we, we stop judging. We stop mm-hmm. seeing all the stuff that's going on and we're able to just focus better. Right. And here, well, also I want to point something out, you know, just the frequency of your voice because of where you are vibrating at is healing for everyone who's listening. It's, it's DNA upgrade time. And today is the first. It is the first of April. It is a new moon. It is an intention setting. Rock your world. What the <laughs> hell are you doing sitting on your ass? Move it. Move it. Move it. Type of day. We've got solar flares coming in. We've got everything is ignited and on fire. And you are the perfect energy for that. So if you're listening to this, go back to where she did close her eyes and just let let it seep into you. Let it just integrate and be permeate into your being. You know, yeah, and allow and allow it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this new moon is um, it's a great opportunity to manifest deep love for the next four months. Mm, and yeah. by the way, that that fits so. beautifully because of, I mean, you, you you went on this beautiful broad answer to the broad question that I asked, but the one thing that I really honed in on was made you, you made very quick reference to it, and then you moved on, but the reference was clear: the the joy that you take in that sacred source connection that you have. That, that it lights you up. It yeah. literally, I mean, it's so it just visceral. Did. It it's just so did. Visceral. Yeah. Just I'm as soon as I said you, that, your whole, just, your face yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. 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 It's this deep knowing. It's this joy that was the gift that we're all given when we come here. Like mm-hmm. it, that's, that's the beauty of life. That's the simplicity. Like all this other stuff goes on, but when it goes back to basic, it's that deep, profound joy and the gift of just breathing, you know, just to breathe is such a gift. It's and, appreciation combined with the joy. You're appreciating your own joy. I mean, yeah. that's the highest form, really. Yeah, yeah. And I really feel um, because of the knowing or the choices that I made at such a young age that I traveled the world and I didn't have a partner for seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was celibate for seven years. I was celibate. I didn't want to be interfered with other people's emotions and what they were feeling um, because I saw so many people upset in their relationships and so many people upset with jealousy and ah, they're doing this and they're doing this or I don't want them to do this. I don't want them to do that. And I'm like, I don't want to be a part of any of that. I'm like, I want to just like travel the world and like see all the abundance of like life uh, um, before committing to anyone in that kind of way. <laughs> so I was celibate and I was in a relationship with myself and with the universe. Um and I chose that journey. And then, 
and then and then I did get into a partnership later on. But um, I chose myself first. And well, well, one leads to the other. You what really can't, you really can't have a successful relationship, primary relationship with somebody else until you have a successful primary relationship with yourself. One thousand. Um, I did that. I love that. I just ended that a year ago, a year <laughs> or so ago. But but you also started is, a new one like within the yeah, last half transition year. Transition. So. Yeah. No, 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 no. That was a year ago. Is that a full year I, now? It's yeah, it's a year, full year. But wow. you know there is. But oh my God, where did the year the, go? <laughs> the, 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 Fourteen All states. All the time. No, I don't even know. Look, it's been no. We've been we've been quantum leaping some stuff. I don't even oh, know what yeah. y'all been doing. We were we're just. Psh. Oh, I love quantum leaping. <laughs> yeah, right. Leaping. Totally. Oh my God. Yeah. I oh love, my God. It's so yeah. amazing. You can oh, be having so this fun. life right now, and like literally in a couple hours, I can be just having a whole different life. Oh, just completely. Based, uh, just based yeah. on the choices we make. Totally, one hundred percent. And if you don't say the sacred yes, then don't expect that to happen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Lisa yeah. Nichols. Yes. I'm yes. Like, yep. <laughs> so people pay a hundred thousand dollars to go to her r- resorts for 10 days for her, she her is seminar rad is all oh, she's gonna her be story i i know her story did you know do you know her story Mm-mm. well she i'm a part no. of mind valley and they invite me to their reunions and things like that and uh-huh. she gave her story she had a son she was working like as a bank teller and she had like a hanger these like wired hangers and she would like hang notes and things on the hangers but she created like a secret savings that she went and like put away the secret savings. They were like eating McDonald's. I don't know the, like, you know, all the depths of it. It was a few years ago, but like, and now she charges a hundred thousand dollars a person for them to come see her and people pay it. And then they go off and have successful businesses. Wow. It's true. It's true. It's true. Absolutely. 100%. One day I remember like, she had this secret savings and like, she didn't look at it. She didn't look at it. And then she went, I think she had like, I don't know, like 56,000 or something like that. She was like, what? And then she quit her job and then went all in on her business. Straight up. That's rocking. I love that. <laughs> Just <sighs> freaking amazing. Seriously. True. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing, the thing that is so true right now is that every, if you, you are the center of your, your universe, you are the common dem- denominator period. Mm-hmm. That's what yep. Katie was just saying. Staying by yourself takes cojones. It, I've done it. I did it for years. She's done it. I'm telling you, it takes guts. It does. It takes guts to be by yourself and understand what aloneness is versus, versus loneliness and understanding how to show up for yourself because now I can show up for me. I don't need somebody. I want them or choose them in my yeah. life. Totally. And I think a lot of people get really scared of being like, oh, my God, I'm going to be alone. It doesn't have to be forever. Like, what happened was when I had a, a past relationship, it was for eight months. It took me a year to get over because I was, like, so in depths of love. And I didn't know how to, like, respond. And I didn't have the tools that I have now. But yeah. now, like, um, um, getting out of a – and then now I'm getting out of a relationship, which was a really long-lasting, beautiful relationship – and, you know, we're going separate ways. But I was so scared because my mind was going to where I was in 2005. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and then I taught myself, I'm like, oh, I reflected. I'm like, it just, you know, within the last six months, it's like, oh, I'm not going to react how I did in 2005. I know so, I'm like a whole different person. I have different resources. I'm going to respond in a new way. So we're friends. We're gracious. We're connected. We have this depth and this love and I'm cheering this person on and this person's cheering me on and, and we're just going on our own journeys. But, but I'm responding instead of like not talking to that person or making about, I'm not putting myself through what I put myself through last time. And I'm not going to put someone else. I don't want to put, put someone else in that position either. When you gift your heart to someone, it's, you know, it's sacred. It's, it's, we, it's Gentile. And it's like, you know, on a psychological level, they say, you know, when you love someone, you let them go gracefully. You know, it's That's like, right. it, it's traumatizing if it's just like, it's not there anymore. Like sometimes you can pull the root, but sometimes when it comes to love, you know, like it's, you can pull the toxicity, those bad patterns. But when it comes to love, you know, and the human condition, how we respond to one another is how we're responding to ourselves. And so the way I responded when 2005, I was reacting. I didn't know what I was doing. But the way I am now, fine, I'll have my moments where I'm grieving. 
I'll have my moments, but I'm enjoying this alone time. And because of who I am and how I'm responding, how I, how I reacted then, how I'm responding now, I know I'm enjoying this alone time because I'm not going to be going another seven years, nine years before I'm with another partner just because of the dynamics of life. Like if I, God willing, want children and it's meant to be for me and because I'm like a young, mature adult now where I can know red flags, I differentiated between those things. So it doesn't have to be like this long time before I'm in another relationship. It could literally be 30 days from now. So trust me, I am enjoying my alone time now because when it hits, it hits and we don't know when it's going to hit, you know? So, but just the importance Mm -hmm. and the importance and the takeaway is when we have that fear that comes up, we're not going to react how we once did in our prior relationship because that's what we compare it to. We have new tools. We have Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Greg, Carl right. Check. We have all Abraham them. Hicks. We have Caroline Mike. Right. We have all these things. If you've gone on the journey and you've done the work, know thyself, and we've done the work, then we well, can trust Well, that's the key right there. Because what you, what you really did is you, you did the work on yourself, really. Yeah. That, that's what it really amounts to. The that's why you're in a place work. now where you, you just you feel differently about yourself, and therefore you feel differently about the experience. It may, the, similar, the, the experience may be similar to, to, what, 15 years ago. But because you did the work on yourself, the way you feel the experience is different. You changed the way that you feel about it. You changed the way that, that you experience it. And you changed what you decided to think about it and to feel about it and to experience it. And that made the difference. And well, here's she's con- the- conscious, conscious, consciously breaking that, right. breaking, breaking up or no longer being, but this is just such brilliance because this is how it really should be done. Right here. I, I've watched this with people. This is, the, there's, when you well, are. Well, works. Well, because she's right. It's the heart. The heart is sacred. Yeah. Loving someone is sacred. And sure. you said like, letting go of them gracefully. You know, letting go of people. Nothing is permanent. People die. People, they're not in your life anymore. To let them go. You know, I remember Wayne Dyer talking about that. You know, they would be like, how can you just like. Because I, I'm in the here and the now, and I appreciate the now for where it's at. And you know what? That's the it. other thing, based on what you just said, when you, yeah. you know, letting someone go, we don't always need to point shame and blame and let them know we're doing it. Because oh, then God, they're, right. they're going to feel rejected from love. If you just yeah. take your attention, your energy, like if you're with this person an hour a, a, a week, but you're like, but you know you need to start weaning your way off of it. Just you're there for 30 minutes. Oh, I got to do a work thing. Oh, I got to go. And you start showing up for like 30 minutes instead of one hour. Then you look at the month. You just got two hours of your time back, right? For for being authentic to yourself, then they're going to appreciate their time with you more. You're going to appreciate their your time with them more. And then you're going to actually be more authentic to not only yourself, but you're showing up for them so they can take that two hours that are normally with you. But you're like, I want to get out of here. But you're they're going to be able to replace that with someone who actually will appreciate their time and their energy, you know. So not only not only are we showing up and raising the bar for ourselves, we're doing it for the people we love as well. And instead of like saying like, oh, I can't be spending so much time with you anymore. I can't be. Do- no, no, no. Just you don't. Then they're going to like feel upset. And there's this conflict that happens. Just pivot and shift silently and gracefully and just start replacing it with something else. And then they'll naturally replace it with something else. Hey, you're talking about making it a nice, easy win-win. Well, she's talking about straight up. That's nonviolent. That's NVC. That's compassionate communication. It's seriously like what is real for that other person? Yeah. And putting that, and I'm curious what's real for them. And taking that next level step of... How how can I treat them with love and kindness and compassion? By treating it's, yourself with love and kindness and compassion first. Right, right. Um, exactly. No, I'm really I it. and and I also heard her honor herself though at the same damn time. Yeah. Y'all catch that? She yeah, honored well, yeah, it. it was like I, I really don't want to be here. I I gotta go to work, you know, but really shifting shifting it. I love it how you did that pivot. I think that was brilliant. And for anybody out there that's that that is listening to this, these are some seriously Hot freaking tools. You, you might want to write it down because it's good stuff. Tell <laughs> it's you very it. good stuff. Yeah, it's no excellent. Doubt about it. Take notes. I always take notes. I want to touch real quick um, about energy and all that other stuff. Yeah. 
I call them energy dollars. I always say that every moment that you're alive, you're given one, every moment, not every second, every moment that you're alive, you're given one energy dollar to spend on whatever you want, whether you're thinking about drama or whatever the situation is, and you get out of things what you put into them. Now you take those two sayings and you got a person like any of us spending time on our craft Learning, watching YouTube videos, getting better. We're spending our energy dollars on that craft and it's going to come back to us. Mm -hmm. That's why doctors have continued education. They need to continue to spend energy dollars on their craft to get better. And that's why they make more money and all that other stuff. And it, the universe kind of lines up. It'll make a carpenter do carpentry and a race car driver race more. And it'll make you do uh, whatever it is. Like, like for me, I want to learn about trailers because I want to get a trailer. I want to know how to use it. I'm spending my energy dollars on YouTube, learning about the trailer. I'm watering the seed of yeah. trailer, trailer, trailer. And guess what I'm going to have? Yeah. The trailer. So there it's you go. all in this formula. So make sure you spend your time on things. You get out what you put in. So you I can't love that. Say, I love that phrase, the energy dollar. The, the, the idea of calling it an energy dollar, because what you're really doing is you're refueling. You're, no, I think of it like spending. You're spending your energy dollars. That's so what it like, is. What did you, I? What did you, I spend my energy dollars? And every time, and every time you spend today? it, you get you get the. That's what my point is. You spend oh, yeah, your energy you dollar, that, and the fuel comes in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a complete cycle. Yeah, it is. So I am an energy billionaire. Crap. That's right. I'm an oh, yeah. energy billionaire. Oh, I'm an energy billionaire too. All I'm right. Rock on. In, Actually, in I became, I just became a trillionaire. What? What'd you say? I said, I'm an infinity in there. Infinity. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I love that. Infinity. <laughs> okay, I, okay, that just, we it's, all it's are infinity. I, I, I just, that. I'm curious, um, is, do you work with people? And if they wanted to work with you privately, how could they reach you? Like, I mean, I know Walt, you're going to ask that question, but I'm, I'm actually, you did. Really, that was perfect timing. Absolutely. I right. really, I, I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, <laughs> Um, I definitely do uh, industry coaching like with people. So um, chinakas.com, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S is my website and people can book on my website. So I definitely do that to support people because they're everyone's on their different journeys. So maybe it's once a month or maybe it's once every two weeks or maybe it's once a week. So it depends like what you put into it, like your energy dollars, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So like if, if I, what I do is I set up a Google doc for people and it's like, okay, here you go. Boom. It's like, there you go. And it's like, it's like, go fetch. And they go and do it. And as soon as they get thirsty and they soak it all up, then they're back. Okay. I did all that. Okay. Let's, let's, I'm like a coach. Like, let's go, let's go for more. Okay, cool. You did that. And then you build and you build and you build. And on a psychological level, you're building mind, body, spirit, and now tech because everything's from home. So um, it's having a, a fine balance with all those things. So sometimes I'm coaching people and it's more about, you know, the craft of this, but then sometimes it's the psychological aspect or what's holding the back uh, mentally, spiritually with their family circumstances, their partners, or just with themselves. And when you get that sorted out, then you learn because then you can apply it to the principle of the craft. But once you get that, then things become more in balance with one another. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Love yeah. it. Love and it. since we're on three different podcasts here, anyone who goes to my website, there's a merch and supports me as a human and artist, even y'all. Like literally, you can be wearing your your um on your show, my whatever you want to buy, but like my podcast or like I have merch. So if you want to support me, but anyone who uh emails me from the website a receipt that they picked up some merch, I will give them a shout out on my podcast from your podcast. Beautiful. Love it. I'm I'll really loving it. that. I, I, I'm on, and I'm. On. Oh, these are just. This is just adorable. It's been a great visit. This has been. I mean, yeah. look at how much. We've I'm not covered. going anywhere. I'm still here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we 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 He's covered. In space. Walt's in, gone already. In, in 45 minutes, we covered what would often be covered in like an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, this this flew. I go fast. I talk fast. So. <laughs> well, well, more than talking fast, though. I mean, you. You impactful. actually, yeah, it's impactful and you zoom in on the essential. I mean, you oh, talk, you, so you, you, you touch on a lot of stuff, but it always comes right back to that essential source connection. That, it, that's what comes Ooh. through time after time after yeah. time. Every single statement you make, it's always going back to that, back to that, back to that. So it was like 10, 15 minutes ago um, when we were talking about certain things and I didn't get to mention it, but I'm going to try to channel and say what I remember from that place. But for the person watching, tuning in, who maybe hasn't done the, the work um, that, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about, you know, um, and I'm looking like solution based here of 
how to do that work. Um, one thing is um, to get out of the head and just start messy. Just start messy. And by being messy, we see what works and what doesn't work. And when we just show up, it's going to dismantle all those other things that were going on in our head, right? Um, and there's another solution-based thing I was going to say with this, something that was just really simplistic was, you know, um, you know, start with being kind to self and, and befriend that journey of, oh, man, I fell off the trampoline. No, you're going to jump off. No, you're going to fly off the trampoline. No, it's going to happen. And when it happens, instead of being mean, oh, you jumped off the trampoline. Oh, you fell. You did that. You, S, you know, you say these mean things. No, befriend that part and be like, it's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you fell, you fell off the trampoline. You knew that was going to happen. Okay. Let's get back on. We're on the trampoline. Oh, but you know, before you get back on, you know, you're going to fall off. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to fall off and we're going to go get some ice cream anyway. So have an interpersonal challenge when going through this journey, right? And befriend self. Cause when we're easier on ourselves, then that, that sets up the precedence of how we allow other people to treat us. And if, if you're listening and tuning in, we all know we allow other people to be so mean to us and we allow other people to treat us in ways that we, we don't want or how we wouldn't treat others, but how we treat ourselves sometimes. So let's clean it up and start befriending self. And it's a practice. And when that becomes more comfortable and more gracious and more fun, then there's that space where we don't allow anyone to treat us in a certain disrespectful manner, not even, not even ourselves. Well, that's so important. In fact, what you're reminding me of, you may remember this, the movie, The Secret, there was the one scene where the woman is in her bathroom and she's brushing her teeth and she over squeezes the tube of toothpaste. Oh, Too much toothpaste I do that all comes the out. Time. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they, they show two different ways that it plays out. The first time it plays out and she gets upset about that. And then she does something that gets a run in her stocking. And then she trips over something and it's like one thing after another. She's just, gets this whole momentum going of one negative thing after another. And then they replay the scene the second time. She squeezes the tube of toothpaste. Too much toothpaste comes out and she goes, oh, okay. And she brushes her teeth. Two completely different reactions to the exact same event. One's oh my gosh. Yourself, one's actually angry to yourself. I need to see that again, but I, I am so aware of that all the time. And if I get frustrated about something, then all of a sudden I, I trip and then something else happens and I'll have mm -hmm. to stop and like say, yo, you need to like change the energy, change yeah. the perception here because of what you just said. That is, that is so powerful. Yeah. It's a that. great reminder. Is that, that the, the shit rolls downhill? That, that's that saying, right? <laughs> well, kind of, yeah. Okay. He says it was a smile. Look at that smile. Nice yeah. smile. You're like, eh. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought, I, I thought that was that. I was like, wait a minute. Cause I know it's like when you're given, like when the chief tells a captain and the sergeant, shit rolls downhill that way. But I, I think it applies to that too. It's similar. Exactly. It's a very similar concept. Really, what, what we're talking about here is how are you going to respond to adverse circumstances? If you respond well, you won't continue to have adverse circumstances. If you don't respond well, get ready. There's more common. Well, we will. We'll still have those, but they won't blow up so big. It's how we respond to it. And, they won't and because, scheme, and right? because we, we respond to them differently, they won't be adverse. That's the thing. Right. Well, what makes adverse, them adverse is our response. Our response what makes them adverse, right. well, that's true, but also an attachment to something or yeah. a, a thought of what it should be versus yeah. what it really, really is. Yeah. It's yeah. that. When we, what it should, sh should, should, don't sh should, don't should all over yourself. Oh my God, should <laughs> try, shouldn't try, should just be ouched, man. Just either trying or lying, either do or you don't. Yeah, that's true. So, but, um, I am just in huge appreciation for you, Katie, and I, I, I hope you can stick around after the show ends because I'd like to get some more information from you. Yeah. Briefly. Okay. Sure. But yeah, yeah. you absolutely, you yeah. just rocked my world today. Aww. And I, am here, I, for just, I am here. Do not forget about me. I am here for y'all. Just I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get on an animation series. I'm going to get on a TV show again, and then we'll come back and have another conversation. Right. Sounds good. Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Katie Chinakis for sharing your, your joyous energy. I mean, you thank just you. loaded Delightful. with the mm. joyous energy. It thank just you. lifts everybody right up. So thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you, you Debbie G. Thank, thank you, people you. on the live stream. Thank you, podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.